Hey guys, this is Noob Nerd here, and today we'll be doing a video that I wasn't really planning to do until a uh, filmmaker and editor known as Andrew List uploaded a video um, trying to share his own fan cut of Justice League. And on this channel, you can see his channel if you haven't yet on the link below, A List Productions, and I'll share the video as he requested. And it's it really it just gives you a link to a one hour seventeen fan cut film of Justice League. He explains all the reasons for his decisions, well most of them, in his own videos, so check out that, trust me. And the rest of his videos on this channel are so good as well. I really respect the guy. And I, I'm, just, I'm just here to give you my impressions of Justice League, because I haven't really talked about them on this channel. Obviously this channel started after it came out, and I've only watched it a couple of times, Justice League. So I've, I reckon I wanted to watch this straight away, and not wait, and just get on with it. And I did watch it. Precisely ten minutes ago, as I'm recording this video, and wow, I'm re I'm really I like I've really got gas watching that. Like really, it got me excited about watching Just League. It got me excited for the DC universe for the for the next couple of years, especially with now we see the Aquaman Shazam trailer. It seems to be that WB are sorting things out. I wish they sort things out as Just League because Just League could have been so much even better if Warner Brothers put some effort. Not put some, put some thought into it. Some more thought into it, if you know what I mean. But of course, that's a whole different discussion. We're here to talk about A List Productions' own take on it, and yeah, this will contain spoilers and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, so where do I begin? Well, he he starts off straight into the Amazon battle with Steppenwolf, and it gets right into the action. It shows that it's connected universe with Wonder Woman. If you watch Wonder Woman. And of course, it, let's just imagine this film was the film that came out. You, it would give Wonder Woman viewers a, a reward for watching that movie, obviously, and then watching this one after. But it, it just still makes sense, really. It, they do that. That is the intro before the, the music video. Uh, everybody knows, with uh, you know the darkness and the people trying to, f trying to kick out the shops and stuff like that. And I think it does work well. And Steppenwolf, watching him again, it's not really do got to do with the fan cut. Just watching him again, Steppenwolf, I do like him. He just he just doesn't get enough backstory. If he got enough backstory, then I think he would be would have been a great villain, even greater villain. Because his lines are great. Sirian Hines, I think that's his name. He's a Game of Thrones actor. He sounds really good in the role. He looks better than I thought he did back when I saw him in the cinema. So yeah, and who knows? Maybe uh, Andrew List might have color graded it some of the scenes maybe he didn't maybe he did but Steppenwolf looks great and he just needs some backstory some more backstory if you know what I mean of course maybe that would have spoiled Darkseid or something if to Warner Brothers we, we'll never know what Zack Snyder had up his sleeve but we'll never know now so yeah he keeps the intro of the the people kicking the shops and all that as I've said but he removes the Wonder Woman fighting the trying to rescue the schoolgirls, which I think Makes sense, he wanted to make this film concise, as he says in the comments below his uh, sharing video. And I didn't really notice, so like, while I was watching the movie, I was like, oh no, I missed that scene. So it's not like anything mental, so that's alright. But of course, it does get paid off a bit at the end, and we'll get to that later. Um, so we get introduced to... Batman. So Batman is... Batman. Sorry, my mind's gone blank, really. It's ridiculous. Even though I just watched this film at the start. Um, I think they do, like, a, a, a cut of, like, all the characters, what they're doing. Including the characters that we don't know. So, so it could, like... You know at the start of Rogue One, when it's, like, jumping planet to planet to planet? It feels like that sometimes. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but it just feels like you're going from one place to the other. And to, like, a casual movie viewer who doesn't really know about all DC Universe and all that, they could be like, okay, what's this, what's this? But, of course, that's the whole point. We'll see at the end. Ah. So, um... Batman scene... Oh, yes, yeah, soundtrack. He, um... He, he uses um, Man of Steel and Dark Knight uh, soundtrack pieces, and I think you might guess if you've listened to those soundtracks which pieces of music are being used. It's the best ones. The most commonly commonly used. I've seen them used in like shows, like TV shows and game shows, because they're that good. 
it's the Dark Knight ones, the Man of Steel ones. I think you can, I think you can guess what you want. Just watch the movie. It fits so well. It makes you feel pumped. It makes any that mu these this that piece of music can make anything feel like like so dramatic. And there's one bit where Batman after he does, after he does that cool scene with that robber, who and that power demon, he jumps off the building. But then he he adds a little video. The editor adds a little video from uh, Batman Begins where you fully see the cape and him flying across the city just for a glimpse so you can't really tell it's two different Batmans from two different eras. So that's that was a very cool thing. Just subtle things like that really helped bring this to life. Um, uh, Wonder Woman. Else? The Flash. The Flash, they remove his video. Uh, you know the bit when he's like, uh, when he draws that moustache on the guy's face while waiting to go to visit his dad. Um, I, I, I like that scene in the cinema. It really gave you a sense of the comedic tone that he was going to be a comedic ca character. But not too comedic, obviously, but still. Like, he's going to be the light heart in this. So that really se I really like that scene. And it's a shame that he brought it out. But, of course, they went straight to Barry Allen just visiting his dad. And that scene, again, is brilliant. I really like how they got the Watchmen actor to play his dad. He's, he does a good job. And Victor Stone, they keep it mostly the same. Yeah, they do. Uh, I think I I didn't I don't actually have the Justice League DVD, so I haven't really watched all the deleted scenes. So it would have been interesting. To see. I don't think he put in any deleted season scenes in. So yeah, I think he literally just used the footage from the movie itself, the theatrical cut. Or maybe we, I mean, he probably added the some sections, but nothing I didn't notice. I haven't really watched all the deleted, deleted scenes of Just League. I just don't think it's a, I think it's a waste of time. But yeah, Victor Stone, he keeps mostly the same. Victor, again, he's such a good character in the movie. I th Just give him more backstory. Give him a flashback. And then his character, he just it go levels. It just goes up. Like, Victor St they got such a good actor for everyone. It's just, just not enough just substance. or You know what I mean? But of course, that's the criticism of Warner Brothers and stuff like that. I don't want to go off on a tangent there. Uh, Aquaman. Of course, we see the Aquaman. He basically, he jumps in in the movie. This is also a problem with the movie, but in the movie, Aquaman just jumps in while everyone's fighting Steppenwolf and stuff. And he, and of course, there's a, there's a, like a one scene, two scenes where he's like talking to the rest of the team and trying to get to know them a bit. But here, it's kind of reduced even more. So yeah, so it's like, Aquaman's just like barely met these people and they're going straight to their final task at hand. But of course Aquaman's such a cool character so it's like it feels it doesn't feel that bad, but yeah. That's another nitpick. Uh what else? Um Backstory. Yeah, he doesn't include the Green Lantern thing in the flashback, I think? No, he does, he does. The flashback is still remained intact, but it's a... Yeah, he does, he does. That's good. Uh, that's very good. That's, kept... that's one of the few things that are good. Uh, Superman, now. Yes, Superman. Now that's a... Uh... So basically, he removes the entire Superman scene with um, them like, trying to like bring it back from the evilness, if you know what I mean. And he explains it in his comments, but yeah, it does work for this thing, I think. And they just make it so Superman just comes alive just as everything's going crap. So we assume he just restored himself back to life. He, there wasn't no mother box or anything like that, which is which is great, fine by me. And they did they did it with such a inspirational music for Man of Steel comes back up, and he really edits the Man of Steel when he's like flying above the earth and trying to get, and it looks like he's trying to go to like the Russia place where the Justice League are, and they uh, and then they have the they have Lois Lane meeting him in the cornfield like at the end. So th so that's a cool thing. That's a cool. Storyline, so they have Superman really, really until the end, so giving time for all these other characters. But of course, it, that does remove some of the, the flash, the you know the the famous Superman, uh, turning of the eye when well Flash is in the speed, force essentially. So yeah, um, it would have been cool to include some Flash tracks and some you know what I mean, so maybe some animated series tracks if I was doing something like that. But of course, I'm not as talented as. A list production, so I don't. I wouldn't even know how to edit the movie for like trim the movie for a start. You know, what I mean, I'm not that good with that. I really, he really inspires me to do stuff like that. I need to do that one day, maybe one day. Um, yeah, uh, he basically removes as many mustache 
gait, if you know what I mean, mustache, uh, just nothing with, with that. Just all the scenes, most of the scenes, all the scenes used as Superman are the ones where his, his face looks normal. <laughs> so yeah, it removes the uh, post, post credit scene with uh, the Flash racing. So that's, yeah, I like that scene except for the mustache, that's literally it. Um, instead. At the, so now we go to the end, so what I was saying about the wom Wonder Woman saving the girls scene, that's completely removed. But the bit where she's standing on like that Lady Liberty almost statue, it's remained intact until the end when they're doing like a... You know when they're showing every character at the end, so the Batman, they show Aquaman going back to the water, the Flash just zip, zipping, zo zooming around Central City. They show Cyborg getting his new suit, which is... Oh, I can't wait to... I really want a Cyborg movie. Give him a Cyborg. Cyborg's my boy. He's underrated. He is on the way. I need to watch more stuff with him. Um, yeah, and they show Batman obviously doing the table thing, and then they show the of course as Lois Lane's talking about the light and the darkness. Wonder Woman standing there next to the Liberty statue that works really well. I really really like that one. I mean that like of course in every movie, most movies have that typical cliche uh running through all the characters at the end, but this one works really well, and it really gives you a satisfying feeling at the end, and yeah. Finally, we have the two post credit scenes. The p two post credit scenes are completely different to the ones, of course. As I've already said, the Flash race is gone. But Green Lantern appears, but of course, without showing his face, they show him coming down to Earth from the Green Lantern movie, obviously. And, yeah, they show all the Aquaman's having a quick, funny line to Batman at the end. Like, just right after everything's gone on. Of course, dressed as a bag. Dressed as a bag. A bag? A b dressed as a bag. Batman. That's that's a good that's a good superhero, yeah. Dressed as a bat, I dig it. But at the end, that doesn't really make any sense considering, because uh, that being at the end of the of the movie it sounds a bit weird. But it's still a funny line. They're having a meeting up again with Commissioner Gordon, which I don't know why. Maybe they're just trying to do other stuff, trying to f trying to do other smaller missions after Steppenwolf sorted out. But yeah, uh, after that, Green Lantern comes down and he's like, he arrives with with everyone else at Commissioner Gordon's place, but they don't show him the face. Obviously, we don't know who Commish who um, Green Lantern is at this point, obviously. He not even now. There's rumours, though, Tom Cruise is going to be it, but that's another video. Stop stop talking about other stuff. But, yeah, Green Lantern comes in as one post credit scene, and they have, they have tense music for that, and you get too excited. But I, if that was me, I wouldn't do that because I, I would I would save the Green Lantern meeting Justice League to, until like a sequel to Justice League. But it works really well here. And the final, of course, Dark Side cut cuts. I was gonna say Dark Side cutscene. Well, it is a Dark Side cutscene from Injustice Two and is used at the like very very end post credit scene. And that, of course, I would have loved to see that in an actual movie. But I guess they haven't got the fully designed Dark Side, right? And uh, I think w WBR holding back on. Dark side. I think they're focusing more on Legion of Doom first before that. God knows when the Just League sequel is coming out. Well, that that's it. All in all, I could talk about more of Just League, but it w it would just be a mix between the fan edit, fan edit, and the Warner Brothers whole treatment of DC in general. <laughs> but yeah, Alias Productions, he's pulled it out of the bag. He really has, and he's such a good. I I hope he continues. Like if he's watching this, I hope you. I don't know if he's watching this, but. Just continue doing what you're doing, man. You, you're brilliant stuff. And I'm, I'm surprised if you haven't yet. You need to get signed up by like a proper movie story, studio, man. You, you deserve it. <sighs> Sometimes I think he, people like him respect Superman more than the actual executives at WB. But with that said, like, comment, subscribe. I really appreciate you watching this video. And I'll see you guys next time. Oh, and before I go, don't usually do this, but I nearly forgot this important point. Um... When Cyborg is trying to remove the mother boxes, he sees the the sequences from Batman vs Superman where the Flash is trying to talk to Bruce Wayne and the uh, Injustice Two almost timeline with the Dark Side symbol in, in the sand and desert and stuff. And I think that's a really cool way of not. It's almost a cop out, but it's like a good way of explaining what happened in Batman vs Superman, as, whilst not making it a bigger thing than it would be. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, I think that's really handled really well. And then the use of Steppenwolf's um, line after. Um, yeah, you see it now. And it's it's like a kind of... So in this movie, I guess, movie's canon, the, the mother box sees alternate timeline timelines or something. Obviously, this is not the actual movie, but you know what I mean? So that's a, that's a, that's a cool way of explaining what happened in Batman, Batman v Superman to the audience and everything like that. So yeah. 
Now I'll actually go. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>